what is up guys long time no talk it's been about as i'm filming this two weeks since i've last filmed or uploaded anything um i got you know jabbed a couple of days ago and i have been feeling like crap um <laughs> the first couple of days i didn't have any symptoms besides like a sore arm and then like the third day it like literally snuck up on me and i ended up having a sore throat body aches headache mean brain fog you know um which is to be expected because i already have like a weak immune system i am anemic so um <laughs> i should have expected it but i didn't and then i ended up passing along a cold to my son so i had to attend to him he's a lot better now as you can hear in the background um but yeah that was it was a lot and I had to take my time before I could get back on the scene. But I am bringing you guys my first half of my February wrap up. Listen, I know I still have not done my second half of my January wrap up, but I have decided we're already at the end of February. So I'm not even going to talk about January right now. Like what I'm going to do is I'll probably wrap it up either on my Twitter or on my Instagram stories. If you guys want to check that out, links to my Twitter and my Instagram will be in the description box below. Um, apologies in advance for my son's, you know, enthusiasticness. He has been down with this cold and hasn't been himself. And now he's happy and joyful all over again, which I love. Um, which, But it also means that he's very loud. Uh, so yeah, I'll probably put my wrap up, my second half of my wrap up there. If you guys are interested, just let me know. Um... But yeah, um, the first half of February, I would say I've read about like five or six books. So that's what I'll talk about now. And if you guys are interested, please stick around. Okay, so the first book that I read was for this read along. I'm taking a part of, a part in, a part of, what's the proper way of saying that? Um, And that is a Dark Tower read along. I have read the Dark Tower for the first time last year. Was it last year or the year before? I started late 2019, but we finished early, t wow, was it two years ago? I don't remember. I'll put, I don't know. I, I finished it recently, like either last year or the year before. Um, and I had a good time with it, but now we're reading it and we're also going to be reading it, like I'm reading it with a different, I'm rereading it with a different group and we're also going to be reading books that tie in with the Dark Tower series that are not exactly a part of the Dark Tower series itself. Hopefully that makes sense. So for the first month, well, for January, we were supposed to read um, The Drawing of the Three. We were supposed to read The Gunslinger and The Drawing of the Three. I finished The Drawing of the Three. I ended up finishing up, I read The Gunslinger January and I ended up finishing The Drawing of the Three this year, this month. Oh my God, this brain fog. I'm telling y'all, it's still here. <laughs> um, And this is the second book and the first time I read this, I gave it like four stars. Upon reread, I gave it like three, but a very low three stars. And this is following what happens in the first book, which isn't much of a spoiler because the first book is like a fever dream in and of itself. Um, in this, we follow Roland, our gunslinger, and he ends up on this beach. And there's like three doors that he has to go through. And in each door he goes through, he brings back another person to travel to this on this quest to go you know find the dark tower that's like the bare bones of the story it's not gonna make sense unless you actually read this series i'm sorry i'm a bad explainator <laughs> i can't, i can't whatever anyways um i gave this three stars because there's a character in here named odetta and she has like a split personality type thing and it's her it's Odetta herself, where she's normal. And then there's Detta, who is like this evil side of her. And what I don't like is that Odetta is a black character, right? And when Detta comes out, she's a very much, it, it's like every black stereotype that you can think of, she is. And it's very heavy on the racism. And I understand it's Stephen King, but usually the reason why I'm able to, I guess, you could say tolerate it is because usually he makes like his evil characters be racist and stuff like that it's not necessarily his good characters too much at least not from the books that i've read so far i have not read all of his books so do not quote me on that but 
I'm like able to be like, okay, they don't have to say this, but whatever. And it's usually in the past, like in the 50s or 40s, like, you know, when people were able to say things and they weren't getting really checked for it <laughs> as they should have. Um, but this is like a fantasy setting, you know? So why do you have to throw unnecessary racism in fantasy? I will never understand because it's not like you're trying to be historically accurate or whatever. It's a fantasy world that you created. So why throw racism into it, you know? And um, I don't know. It just wasn't for me. And I think the first time I read it, I was just so excited to get to this story, to get to the end, to see what happens. Because the first book is... a. I enjoyed it, but it is a little bit much when you first read it. Um, and so I was excited because that, at that time, that was like my second time trying to reread that first book so I could get to this book. So I was excited that I actually finished it. Like I actually finished the first one and got to move on to the second one. That I just was enjoying how much faster paced this was because this is way much faster paced. Even though it's longer than the first one, it's way faster. Um... And there's way more, like, action and stuff like that. And I love Eddie as a character, but I cannot get past the racism this time. Like, I was reading it. I was taking my time with it because I knew what to expect. And I was just mm, disturbing the word. Um, yeah, so mm, it's a low three-star, but I might change it to a two-star. I'm not sure because... <coughs> Ooh, I'm sorry. Like I said, I liked the fast-pacedness of this. I like the idea of the portal fantasy aspect of going into different worlds and I like Eddie I love Eddie but oh that racism in the last like quarter of the book was just not it so for right now it's at a low three star might change depending on how I feel I still gotta marinate on it some more next book that I read was in the time of the butterflies by Julia Alvarez and I ended up giving this four stars I really did enjoy this um this i this is my second time reading this and I think it was much needed because the first time that I read it I remember enjoying the writing but I didn't remember the story too much and this reread has really cemented my love of this book um it made me understand it a lot more because I'm older now and this book follows our four sisters the Mirabao sisters in the Dominican Republic when they were fighting Trujillo's rule who he was a dictator in the Dominican Republic from like the 50s and 60s and um Three sisters end up dying, one sister survives, and basically this one sister is visited by this reporter and has to tell her story. Now, this is, like, semi-fictionalized. Like, the major plot points of the sisters, like, things that they did, um, arrests that were made, their deaths, that is the true story. But the stuff in between, like, what they did day to day and um, conversations that they had and stuff like that, how they were thinking, how they were feeling, stuff like that is fictionalized. Um, I feel like Julia Alvarez did a really good job at respecting the sisters' legacies, even though she didn't know, she admits in her office, no, she didn't know much about what happened with them, only the snippets of information she could garner from here and there. And I really admired the sisters' bravery, like, the fact that they were braver than even some men, some soldiers. And these are women that were mothers, women that were, si like, sisters, obviously, daughters, um... You know, they had, one of them was, like, a really, like, she was really into her faith, you know? And the fact that they were willing to, like, put their lives on the line, even though they were scared a lot of the times, even though it meant sacrificing time with their families, you know, sacrificing time from their children, they fought so hard to defend their country and to liberate their country and I just admire these women so much like I feel like if you are into historical fiction this is a book you definitely need to pick up because not only is the story itself so good the writing is beautiful um you really feel for these sisters you feel like you knew them like it's just oh it's it's beautiful I can't recommend this enough if you haven't picked this up and you love historical fiction then I highly do recommend you pick it up the next book that I read, I listened to via audio, and it is called Clap When You Land by Elizabeth Acevedo. Um, I'm glad I went the audio route for this because it made me enjoy it more. I gave it four stars. And this follows our two sisters, Camino, who lives in the Dominican Republic, and Yahaira, who lives in New York, who have the same father, and their father dies when he's going from New York to the Dominican Republic, his plane crashes. And they find out about each other because they didn't know about each other before. 
um and it basically talks about that like them how they felt about their parent about their dad's passing and then how they feel about discovering each other i really did enjoy specifically yahira's um perspective because i felt like i related to yahira a lot more you know when she because she was the one to find out that her father had like you know cheated that he had another marriage that he you know had another wife another child and um i went through something similar not exactly that but like you know um just something similar and um the way she tried to protect her mom from knowing same thing and I just, I don't know, I really related to Hyra more, which doesn't mean I didn't like Camino's storyline. I did enjoy Camino's storyline. Um, I think Elizabeth Acevedo did a really good job in writing how you could put a person on a pedestal, you know? This person that's done no wrong in your eyes, that has taken care of you, that has shown you nothing but love and support your whole life. And then one thing, one mistake can make you see them in a different light you know like nobody's perfect a lot of people make mistakes and even the person that you think can do no wrong that can't make any mistakes does make mistakes and it does change how you view them even though you don't really want it to um I think Elizabeth Acevedo did a really good job with that the only issue I had was after the sisters like reunite I felt like they accepted each other way too fast because like I know if I was a teenager and I would have realized my dad had like another child that I didn't know about and then I met this child and I'm like you know they always went to like especially with Camino because he's their father spent more times with Yahira because he was with Yahira throughout like the whole school year and then in the summertime he would go to the Dominican Republic or whatever and Camino got like a little slice of him like she got a way smaller slice of him than Yahira did and I feel like Gamino was so quick to be like, like at first she had a little bit of judgments when it came to Yahira, but it was, it was d done so fast. Like one minute she just didn't like her and then the next minute she was like, okay, well this is my sister and I'm going to have to accept it. And I feel like in real life, you're not going to do that. You know, you're not going to accept some sibling that you just came across who had more time to spend with your father than you like that quickly. At least I wouldn't. I don't know. It just, it just felt like it was way too fast. Um, things got wrapped up a little too neatly for my taste. Um, but Elizabeth Acevedo's writing was beautiful as always. She really knows how to make you feel emotions. I do think this is one of those type of books that you're not really gonna... It's not gonna impact you that much unless you've experienced this specific thing. Either A, losing a parent or B, you know, having a parent that you realized wasn't perfect that had, you know that made a mistake that really hurt you and possibly somebody else um if you can't relate to stuff like that I don't think this book will have that much of an impact on you but I think if you have gone through things like that and you can relate to things like that then yes this book will definitely it will definitely cause some feels because it sure enough did for me the next book that I read was One True Loves by Taylor Jenkins Reid and I gave this three stars it was okay um, in this book, we follow our main character, who I cannot remember her name to save my life, and she is married to Jesse, I think his name is, and they have, like, you know, this beautiful marriage and stuff like that. They're, like, and, well, the book starts off with, okay, I'm gonna start over. The book starts off with our main character, who I still can't remember her name, <laughs> And she is married to this man named Sam. They're chilling at a restaurant with her parents, you know. They are engaged, thinking about what they're going to do, like getting married-wise and stuff like that. And then the dinner ends. Our main character is leaving the restaurant. She gets a phone call. And it's like, yo, it's your husband. I'm not dead. I'm coming back to you. And basically what happened was that before our main character married Sam, she had been married well got engaged to Sam she had been married to Jesse and Jesse like after their honeymoon ends up going somewhere on a helicopter for something he got invited somewhere I don't remember what it was exactly um <laughs> and the, the helicopter crashes he dies so um or dies I should say um <laughs> So for like three years, you know, our main character is like grieving him and everything. She runs into Sam, who used to have a crush on her back when they were in high school. 
they start dating one thing leads to another they fall in love they get engaged and then jesse comes back um and things ensue from there she has to decide who she wants to be with yada 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 i thought this book was just okay it wasn't memorable as you can see i can't really remember full details of everything uh i made the mistake of reading this after i have read the seven husbands of evelyn hugo not right after i read the seven husbands of evelyn hugo but the seven husbands of evelyn hugo was the first taylor jenkins book i read and then i read this and i don't think i should have done that i should have picked something else maybe daisy jones of the six which i don't know that book doesn't really speak to me but um <laughs> maybe i should have read that because this was very much a disappointment i felt like i f i prefer sam like out of out of like the two guys i prefer sam um but i feel like overall all these characters were kind of like just surface level um we get like flashbacks of her relationship with jesse and stuff like that but it was so fast and the same thing we get flashbacks with when her and sam recording but it was so like fast and so surface level like they went here and they did this and they used to like eating this stuff over here and stuff like that and it makes you no know, proposal and i just couldn't i couldn't feel like their relationship meant anything especially with jesse like you know we're supposed to be really hung up on the fact that he's that he, they were so in love and they had like the perfect future and then he dies and she's like greeting him and now all of a sudden he's back and now she has a chance at like you know doing this again and I didn't feel bad like I mean yeah I felt bad for the guy for being like stranded and ha doing to do what he had to do in order to come back to his wife but also with Jesse he had obviously mental problems because of what he went through to try to get home um and it was like never discussed like Taylor Jenkins would just say things like oh he was uncomfortable in a room full of people um he would get culture shocks because he like you know certain things weren't there when he disappeared off the face of the earth you know and things changed in his hometown so he had to deal with that sorry my son had a very important thing he wanted to show me which was his little stuffed dog that he got recently um what was i saying yeah they were very like one-dimensional uh oh the therapy thing yeah she would say things like he was uncomfortable being in a room full of people and things changed in his hometown that he was upset about but never once did I mention him going to any type of therapy, like no physical therapy, no emotional therapy, nothing. It was just kind of like glossed over. And then like she kept sleeping with the both of them, even though she was trying to actively decide who to be with. And it was just like, like what, what, like, huh? I don't understand. I don't know. It just was not what I was expecting. From Taylor Jenkins read um I expected there to be more character development more emotions and it just was nothing like I didn't really care who she picked at the end because I just kind of felt a little bit bleh about both of them to be honest um what I did like that Taylor Jenkins did was she did really hone in on the idea of a person like of not having one true love like you know like people can have multiple true loves you know you could fall in love with somebody and they can like die or something or you break up and then you could find someone else that becomes your true love you know like i feel like that's a pretty common thing and um i, I that's what i really liked but other than that it was okay at best <laughs> the next book that i read definitely had way more substance than one true love and also it was very hard and very hard hitting <laughs> and that is black girl unlimited by echo brown i got this from my library um i got this on the recommendation of jeff from dreaded and reddit i will leave her awesome channel down below you should subscribe to her if you haven't because she's just amazing beautiful a blast a joy to watch anyways um yes she was like raving up and down my tl about this book and i was like you know what i need to borrow it from my library i need to read it because i was gonna wait to buy it but i'm like you know what let me just get it from my library i'm supporting my library and i'm reading a book that my friend recommended why not um and she told me thank you 
Jeff for letting me know the content warnings for telling me you know warning me ahead of time like you should pace yourself do not try to read this all in one go because although it's short it packs such a punch there's so many heavy things rape drug abuse um sexual assault suicide you know alcoholism like so many things like almost any trigger you can think of is in this book and basically we follow our main character echo and this is kind of like a semi-autobiographical story which makes it a little bit more hard-hitting um and it is full of fabulism so we have our main character echo brown who is living with her two brothers and her mom and her stepdad in this apartment like i said um we have echo brown dealing with her seeing her mom struggle with addiction she herself goes through things and one day this like portal opens in their ceiling and she's like transported to this new place by her ancestors and every time she's transported to this place it's like she's more exposed to seeing other people's avails or like their struggles that they're secretly dealing with that nobody knows about but every time she comes back um she ends up like encountering like I don't know how to explain it. She goes through a lot more stuff that happens and her own veil, her own shroud of darkness gets larger and larger and she has to like, you know, decide what she's going to do, you know? And um, like I said, it's hard to explain. Uh, I'm just going to read this little part. It says, each day Echo travels between worlds, leaving her brothers, her friends, and a piece of herself on the east side. There are dangers to leaving behind the place that made you. Echo soon recognizes the pain flowing through everyone around her, and a black veil of depression threatens to undo everything she's worked for. Heavily autobiographical and infused with magical realism, Black Girl Limited fearlessly explores the intersections of poverty, sexual violence, depression, racism, and sexism. Um, like I said, this is a hard book to read. It's a hard book to explain. So I do recommend going in it with caution. The writing in here is absolutely beautiful. I think my only, like I gave this four stars and I think what stopped it from being a five star was the magical realism aspect to it just kind of took away from the story for me. It wasn't something that I really enjoyed all too much and it kind of made the story feel a little less impactful if that makes any sense but other than that i really enjoyed this book really just like it's hard to say enjoyed it but i i just felt seen in this book that's the best thing i can say i felt seen in this book um i feel like this is such a good i'm, I'm glad it's marketed ya because i feel like a lot of teenagers go through stuff like this and to see it portrayed in a book it, you know it makes all the difference so yeah those are the books that i read in the first half of february and those are my thoughts um if you guys have read any of these books let me know down in the comments what you guys thought of them don't forget to like comment and subscribe if you feel so inclined because that helps out my channel a lot i'm sorry it's been so long since i filmed or anything i'm kind of rusty at it again but um yeah i won't leave you guys for two weeks once again i really missed you guys uh get vaccinated if you're able to wear a mask at all times and above all make sure you take care of your physical emotional and mental well-being i love you guys i'll see you guys in my next video bye